The Georgia Tree Farm Program is a state program tied in with the American Forest Foundation, American Tree Farm System, headquartered out of Washington, D.C. The program originally started in 1941 in Washington State, which was initiated by Weyerhaeuser in order to instill an interest in private landowners in profit forest management. It focuses on timberland owners who own between 10 and 10,000 acres of timberland, who have an active management plan, and will abide by the 2015 and 2020 standards. But the big thing is, just folks that are passionate about taking good care of their timberland. And that's why we're excited to be a part of it. People ask me, what, what does Waverly Woods mean to you? Why do you go there? What is it about trees? Many of our guests, if asked a place that they would like to go for vacation, will mention that they'd like to go to Waverly Woods. One of the greatest things that I enjoy about the property is uh, we're given a, a creative canvas, so to speak, of this uh, tree farm and we get to, to just change things and adapt and, and, and kind of make it special to our own. I'm Jim McGurn. I'm the uh, tree farm inspector that nominated John and his family for uh, tree farmer of the year for the state of Georgia. And I first met John on a tree farm reinspection. And I came out here, it's the first time I'd been here. And, and some of the structures that are here today weren't here uh, two years ago. And after talking with John, he was so passionate that uh, when, I, when I went back to my office and was filling out the paperwork, it just so happened the email came across uh, from the president of the Georgia Tree Farm Association and, and uh, we were needing applications for Tree Farmer of the Year. And I said, hey, John and Miss Rosalie and, and his family, you know, it's the best tree farm I'd seen in the state of Georgia, uh, Southeast Georgia where I work in a long time. And I said, these guys have got to be nominated. Ten, twelve years ago, uh, we got one of our first grants from the, uh, I'm going to say it was from NRCS, to, uh, to go in and, and, and plant some pine trees. Uh, and I was amazed. I was like, I couldn't believe that there was assistance like that. So I started looking deeper into it, and I found there was assistant programs from the National Wild Turkey Federation, the Georgia Forestry Commission, the Georgia Fish and Wildlife, uh, the NRCS. There was uh, Longleaf Alliance. There's so many opportunities out here that are willing to work with landowners to help us create this paradise. This property right here, this site right here that you see behind us started out when my mom first inherited the property as just a little hardwood hammock in the middle of the timber. The grandchildren have learned to, to read tracks of animals, to appreciate the wildlife, and that's the generation when I'm gone and when my children are gone they're gonna be here. We started camp, tent camping here, and eventually everything evolved. We moved into small, dirty campers, and then built a barn that everybody could live in. Um, eventually built the cabin. We added on many different structures on the property that would um, better accommodate us for all the different reasons that we like to come here. You know, we've had a couple forestry field days out here. We, we've got to bring other people, other foresters and, and other landowners and people who work in the forest industry, uh, come out and look at our property and, and we get to share our experiences and, and show people that you can grow uh, this species of trees in this condition. It, 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 it is successful and it does happen. I have no worries about the next generation here because I know they have developed the essence of what needs to carry on. This is the first stand of longleaf pine that we planted on our plantation in year 2000. It was shortly after my sister Amanda graduated uh, from the University of Georgia with a degree in wildlife biology and she encouraged us uh, to plant this species of pine uh, to, for the benefits of wildlife. We've, uh, we have enjoyed working with this uh, this specific species and uh, we're planting more of it uh, around the farm every opportunity that we get. 
I had a, a great compassion for wildlife younger as a kid by coming to visit the other parts of the family property when I was younger and over the years it evolved and I went to school for wildlife biology at the University of Georgia and that passion there helped me to um, learn a lot of information that we could utilize here on the property. If you don't have it in your everyday life, it, it's, um, it's an amazing experience and to watch these, our friends and our guests react to being in the outdoors and experiencing this, it's, it's awesome. It's just awesome. We found these uh, gopher turtle dens on the property. There are several in this area. There's probably, I don't know, 15 or 20 acres of the, this is the perfect kind of soil here for a gopher turtle. And uh, we had a forestry field day not too long ago and uh, some of the guys brought out a camera and they actually snaked down this gopher turtle hole and we found four live gopher turtles right in this area around us in our management plan this was never on the agenda until recently and we said hey we have this cool natural uh, thing occurring let's enhance it let's make sure we protect that and have that for all future generations another great thing about waverly woods is the um, ability for us to bring guests here so that they can come and enjoy the same privileges that we have on the property we'll have people here all year long enjoying the many um, recreational activities that we can do on the property. There's trails to walk and bicycle or use an ATV on. We have the lake for fishing in. We, we have a very close organization that's dear to our heart. It's called Make a Difference Fishing Tournaments for Special Needs Children. Some of the kids fish, some of the kids just like the outdoors and want to go run around a field and poke ant piles and be in the outdoors. This is stuff they can't do in the city and, and at their homes. One of the things that we've really strived to do is create as much diversity on the property as, as we can. Behind me we have this uh, almost a hardwood corridor that separates about 20 acres of loblolly pine with another 20 acres of loblolly pine. And instead of having this huge 40 acre strip here, we said let's cut it in half and let's use some of this existing hardwoods to create a better wildlife habitat so the game can not only feed but can also traverse through the property if a section of land was cut or thinned. There's always this corridor to connect back and forth. Here we are located on the south side of our property and we're at a, a major intersection and we have several different things going on and happening here. One of which is our new plantation of longleaf pine that's about two years old. And what's neat about this was there was a stand of loblolly that was planted in 1964 and harvested in 2000 and let's say 15. But we were trying to create diversity on the property. So sometimes in doing that, you have to prematurely cut some timber and if it makes sense, post-maturely cut. So you're cutting stuff before it's really ready and sometimes you gotta wait till a little later to cut it to create this diversity. Over here, another thing that we did was we took this, uh, uh, it was a log deck where they would load the trucks and, and prepare the, the timber to leave the property. And we thought, what can we do with this log deck to, to uh, repurpose it or recycle it? So we also pushed the trash into the middle, burned a windrow, which also created great soil, and we established a pear tree plot for our wildlife. Now these pear trees are probably five or six years old, and they produce about 50 or 60 pears per tree a year with little to no maintenance. Here we are in the, uh, the center of our property in the middle of a swamp. So we had no access to haul timber and manage the, the timber on the south end. So we constructed this road across the swamp. And one of the things we had to do was protect uh, these, uh, the water to make sure the water level was on, even on both sides of this road across the swamp because we can't restrict the water. So we set in several culvert pipes to help the flow of water. But on top of it, we created this structure where we took some hog wire fencing and some fence posts and built a blockade around these pipes that will collect all the floating debris and keep it from stopping up these pipes. This was one big monoculture forest we had here of about 65 acres. And we wanted to encourage more wildlife. Uh, working with the National Wild Turkey Federation 
and the National Soil Conservation Association, we were able to attain a grant that allows us to come in and clear and plant a native warm season grass plot. Here we have a loblolly plantation that has been thinned three times since 1984. It's pretty much ready to be cut, but we're gonna thin it one more time to create some more diversity here. Timber is an important and vital role for us on the property. Without the timber management, we couldn't afford to manage for wildlife. Um, we couldn't afford to buy the equipment and pay the taxes. One of the favorite things that our family likes to do is prescribe burning. And this is a great burn that we uh, have, have done three or four times in the past. It becomes almost a, a festival for our family where we all meet here and we pair great dinners and we, we all take turns with drip torches and plowing fire breaks and participating in it. And it's one of the neat things that, that draws our family together here. Not many people can say that, what'd you do over the weekend? Well, we went to the plantation and we burned 150 acres of understory. The woods are really, truly restful, and the older I get, the, the more I appreciate them. When I look to where I want to be 20 years in the future, I would love for my kids to be able to come here with their children and pick pecans off the property. My husband and I instilled a lot of that into our kids and visitors so that they would have that same interest and passion for the property as we do. We're looking after basically private non-industrial timberland that embodies the good sense of stewardship for woods, water, wildlife, and recreation. And they cover all those bases here. It's a show place, it truly is. As they've said, they partner with a lot of different organizations and are actively reaching out to share. And this has been nothing but fun. A little sweaty sometimes, a little hot, a little buggy, but uh, it's all worth it in the end. Hot weather makes good timber, as the old timers in North Carolina say. What a blessing it is to be a part of the 2017 Tree Farm Program in Waverly Woods Timber Plantation.